minutes now before the hour. Cool. So now we have yet another delay for Obamacare. The administration has delayed signing the final agreements with the insurance companies, plans that are to be sold on federal health insurance exchanges. Republican Congressman Robert Pettinger of North Carolina is with me now. And, sir, good morning to you. I, I want our viewers to see the number of delays here, okay? On the screen at home, Medicare cuts delayed, employer mandate delayed, Subsidy verification delayed, out-of-pocket caps delayed. You've got waivers for at least 2,000 businesses and unions, and now you well, you've also got that congressional waiver that we'll get to in a moment, which is turns out to be a subsidy in the end. What do you make of all this now, sir? Well, good morning, Bill. It just sounds like to me that Ms. Pelosi should have read the bill, and the president should have read the bill. Uh, in North Carolina, for example, Bill the. Uh, uh, the cost of our health insurance, we're told by Blue Cross Blue Shield, is going to go up 284 percent. We've lost 240,000 full-time jobs in a report that came out in the month of June. This is a train wreck, as Max Balk has said, and we need to get a hold of this. And the American people are understanding uh, what an enormous mess this has become. You said what Baca said, Lamar Smith says, and quoting now, no train wreck in history has had this many warning signs. If there are this many warning signs, and we found a poll just last month that 57% of those we surveyed find that, that Obamacare right now, um, they say it's a joke. If that's the case, how does that practically apply to the American people a year from now when you're looking at elections? Could this in turn backfire on those who actually passed the bill into law? Yes, sir, I believe it will. I think as it plays out, uh, the American people see what a disaster it is. And, uh, you know, it's Obamacare. He attached his name to it. Uh, this is what he believes in. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and all the Democrats voted for this bill. It was totally a partisan vote. They ramrodded it through. They own it. And they're going to have to live up to the impact of what it's had. Well, in the meantime, I mentioned these, these subsidies to members of Congress and, and, and their staffs. I mean, this is, this is crazy. I mean, you, you, you pass a law, you don't like the law, then you change the rules for those who are affected by it. You made news this week because you said officially you will not take the subsidies. Explain why. Yes, sir. You, well, I'm not going to be above the law. Uh, the president has decreed as a monarch, and that seems to be the new role that he has defined himself. And uh, he has said that members of Congress uh, should be allowed to take that subsidy. Uh, I'm not going to take the subsidy. I'm going to live under the same standards as the American people and abide by the same code of the Obamacare that they have to live by. But, but even then, you probably have staff members, you know, that, that, that do, do not make a lot of money, but, but yet they will take the subsidies from, from the government. Well, now, make, position, make sense of that for us. Sure. I mean, they're not, their position is not going to change. It won't be any different than any other federal employee. Uh, so uh, I'm, that, my case is about what I believe is right as a member of Congress. As a member of Congress, I don't believe I can live above a law of any other individual in this country. Uh, Representative Shelley Capito is writing legislation now that says that no member of Congress can accept anything that is different than the American people. I will be an original co-sponsor of that bill. Uh, we will follow that, and we'll see how many members of Congress follow your lead, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank Congressman you, Pettinger there out of Charlotte, North Carolina. With